The Checkpoint is presented by GM Pharma, the first international multinational pharmaceutical company in Georgia. GM Pharma, to serve those who need it most. National Geographic Travel Magazine published a special guidebook, 100 Cities, 5,000 Ideas, Where to Go, When to Go, What to See, What to Do by Joe Yogerst, with the index including the Georgian capital of Tbilisi. Joe Yogerst, who visited Georgia as part of a press tour arranged by the Georgian National Tourism Administration, GNTA, covers Tbilisi's historic districts, cultural landmarks, museums, lodging options, and Georgia's history and culture. In third quarter of 2022, the unemployment rate in Georgia decreased to a historical minimum and amounted to 15.6% according to the National Statistics Office of Georgia, Geostat. The number of unemployed decreased by 60.1 thousand, which is 19.3% and equaled 250.7 thousand. According to statistics, 1.36 million people are considered officially employed, which is 77.5% thousand more than last year. Russia's share in both tourism and exports has decreased compared to the same period of 2019, said Finance Minister Lasha Khutsishvili while presenting the 2023 budget project to the parliament. The minister noted that Russia's invasion of Ukraine is the most important challenge for the Georgian economy, both at the global and regional levels. According to him, based on the statistics of nine months from the beginning of the year, the recovery of tourism amounted to 97.5% and without Russia and Ukraine, 98.1%. In total, the growth of exports in nine months amounted to 37.4%, and without Russia and Ukraine, the figure stood at 47.1%. The National Bank of Georgia has been working on the implementation of the Digital Lari project for the second year. As NBG Governor Kobagvenit Aze told BMG, the research is currently conducted to determine the possible purposes of using the Digital Lari. A wider study is being done, but we cannot say exactly when the results will be available. But our goal is to introduce a pilot test to understand the purposes that we think should be served by the digital currency. It, as I stated. This is The Checkpoints. I'm Elena Kvangelashvili, author and the host of the show, and The Checkpoints team is ready to sum up business and economics week for you. In the third quarter of 2022, the number of arrivals of international non-resident travelers in the territory of Georgia equaled 2.3 million, which is 2.8 times higher compared to the data from the same period of previous year. Most of the incomes, 42 and 9 percent, were made by travelers of 31 to 50 age groups. The number of visits by international visitors from the above mentioned number made up 1.9 million, which is 2.6 times higher compared to the data from the same period of 2021. In the third quarter of 2022, the number of international visitors equaled 1.6 million, that is two and a half times higher compared to the data from the same period of the previous year. In the reporting period, international visitors have made one and a half million to type visits, which is 2.2 times higher compared to the data from the same period of the previous year. 78.7% of international visitors were only tourists. The share of excursionists amounted to 17.3%, while 4% of visitors were both tourists and same-day visitors. In the third quarter of 2022, the largest number of visitors, about 44,000 visitors, uh, were from the Russian Federation which amounted to 27.7% of total number of visitors. In second place is Armenia with 15.3% share and in third place Turkey with 13.7% share. Correspondingly, the largest number of uh, visits were made by the citizens of the Russian Federation, Armenia and Turkey. The majority of visitors, that is 47.3%, belong to the age group of 31 to 50 years. The number of women equaled 44.9% of the total um, number of visitors in the third quarter of 
2022, the purpose of the majority of visits, 60.3%, was holiday, leisure and recreation. The majority of visits come to Tbilisi and the Jara Autonomic Republic. In third quarter of 2022, the average number of nights spent during the visits equal to 6.8 nights. 65% of visits were repeat visits. The expenditures during the visits made in third quarter of 2022 equaled uh, 4.6 billion lari. Average expenditure on the visit equals 2,411 lari. More on how Georgia's economy performed this week right now. Irakli Garibashvili, Prime Minister of Georgia, met Park Jehayan, Chief Executive Officer of K Water Corporation on Monday. The latter is a company which made an investment into Nesker hydropower plant of Georgia. Meeting held at the government administration was focused on the implementation of current and future projects in the energy sector of the country. Significance of investments in the sustainable and renewable energy sources was highlighted at the meeting. According to Irakli Garibashvili, the government of Georgia Georgia offers a supportive environment to investors. The Prime Minister of Georgia noted that engagement of the state is important in the construction of large hydropower plants by taking into account that the national interests of the country. Nescar hydropower plant is one of the largest investment projects which provides the construction of a hydropower plant with a capacity of 208 megawatts in the Swanati region of Georgia. The investment value of the project is 1.5 billion USD. Goods worth 449 million USD we exported from Georgia to foreign countries during the last month, which was 9% more compared to the previous year, according to the preliminary data from the National Statistics Office of Georgia. Overall, Georgia's exports amounted to 4.54 billion USD in the 10 months of 2022, which was 34% more compared to the same period of the previous year. As for imports in October, Georgia purchased 1.1 billion worth of goods from abroad, which was 20% more compared to the previous year. In the 10th months of the year, the imports volume amounted to 10.7 billion, which was an annual increase of 33%. Just that we'll publish detailed data on the external merchandise trade of Georgia on November 21. The rehabilitation of Tbilisi's Queen Catherine Avenue had finished and road traffic was resumed last week. According to Tbilisi City Hall, the project included updating the underground and above ground connections, drainage system, modern LED lights and pedestrian walkways. It also included landscaping. Tbilisi Mayor Kahakaladze also with the deputy mayor Sirakli Bendeliani and Andrea Basilaya got acquainted with the completed works. The project worth of more than 8 million gelari was financed by the city hall budget. Oliver Warhe, the European Union Commissioner for Neighborhood and Enlargement on Tuesday told a press briefing in Tbilisi there we obvious signs the Georgian economy was developing. At the press conference alongside Prime Minister Iragal Bashvili, Varhe said the economy is blooming. I went through the city and it's obvious to everyone that the economy is developing. There is a progress in Georgia. He also added, the country had shown us very clearly that the only joining the European Union is a strong and solid goal of Georgia and long-term stability and peace are needed for this. We heard this message and I came to Georgia not only to say that we heard this message, but also to inform you that we are ready to fulfill this request. We want to help Georgia prepared to join the European Union. We want to move forward together in this direction. He also told the briefing. David Narmania, the head of Georgia National Energy and Water Supply Regulatory Commission, on Wednesday introduced the 2021 activity report to the Parliament. The document included all main directions of the Commission's activity. David Narmania made a special emphasis on the innovations implemented in the Regulatory Commission during the 2021 and highlighted the new regulations established in accordance with the EU 
integration agenda. He also spoke about the process of developing the regulatory framework and harmonizing with the legislation of energy union. He also spoke about the newly introduced services as a result of the reforms carried out in the Commission, which made it easier for the customers to communicate with utility companies. David Narmania also said that there were no plans to increase utility tariffs during the autumn and winter season of this year. Georgian Finance Minister Lasha Khotsishvili on Thursday reported to the Parliament over the 2023 budget, covering a number of topics including inflation, tourism and wage policy. The following are the key takeaways from his presentations. Khotsishvili emphasized the need for salary policy regulation, hence the budget for 2023 anticipates a 10% increase in public sector salaries, except for soldiers and police officers who will benefit from 20% increase. The minister deemed Russia's invasion of Ukraine the most important challenge facing the economy of Georgia and other countries. Additionally, he provided the MPs with nine months statistics demonstrating that since the beginning of the year, the terms recovery reached 97.5%. According to the finance minister, inflation is a topical issue everywhere, including in Georgia. He went on to say that the inflation growth rate will continue to slow down in the coming months and return to the target rate in the second half of the next year. Lasha Khotsishvili asserted that the nation anticipates economic growth of 5% next year and 5.25% over the next two years. He also said that when planning the 2023 budget, his agency would keep a conservative approach. In October 2022, the volume of money transfers from abroad constituted 502 million USD, which was 143% more compared to the previous year, according to the report published by the National Bank of Georgia, NBG. The Russian Federation is still in the first place, which is related to the savings made by tens of thousands of migrants. In October, a total of 299 million USD came from the Russian Federation, which was 726% more than the previous year. The second place was taken by Italy with uh, 36 million USD, and in the third place to the United States of America, 30 million USD was transferred in October from our strategic partner. Countries with the most remittances in October, Russian Federation USD 290 99 million, an increase of 726% over the previous year. Italy, USD 36 million, an increase of 8% compared to the previous year. USA, USD 30 million, an increase of 26% compared to the previous year. Greece, USD 19 million, 0% increase over the previous year. Israel, USD 16 million, an increase of 8% over the previous year. Kyrgyzstan, USD 16 million, an increase of 164% compared to the previous year. Germany, USD 15 million, an increase of 42% compared to the previous year. Turkey, USD 9 million, an increase of 4% compared to the previous year. Kazakhstan, USD 8 million, an increase of 13% compared to the previous year. Armenia, USD 5 million, an increase of 346% compared to the previous year. Yes, here. Overall, in 10 months of 2022, USD 3.3 billion were transferred to Georgia in the form of remittances, of which USD 1.4 billion accounted for the Russian Federation, 352 million to Italy and 263 million to the USA. This week, BMG TV hosted the ambassador of Ger Germany to Georgia, Peter Fischer. Fischer is a career diplomat who joined the German Federal Foreign Office in 1986. His professional path has focused on Germany's global partnerships for economic progress and sustainability. He has held several positions at the Federal Foreign Office in Berlin, including Head of Department for International Environmental Policy, as well as Chief Economist. He served at German diplomatic missions in Washington, D.C., as Head of the Economic Department in Tel Aviv, as Deputy Ambassador, as well as in London, Shanghai, and Singapore. Georgi Sakate conducted an exclusive interview with be airing part of it today and you can view the full interview in Forbes Week this Sunday evening. Don't miss. 
Uh, your background is quite followed with economics, climate changes, uh, energy portions and things like that. Uh, can we consider that besides politics, it uh, will be main areas what you're going to be following as a general purpose of your work, what you're going to be doing for next years in Georgia? Well, economics, politics, it's all connected. Indeed. So my main focus is going to be to accompany Georgia and to support Georgia on its path towards the European Union. Georgia has declared it wants that membership and uh, we, the, the European Union, have said we welcome the membership. And so the main focus, the framework of my work is supporting Georgia on that path. Uh, we can, I'm sure we'll talk more about that. Yes, the definitely. details of those paths as we How go along. How we're doing, that's going to be my next question. <laughs> yes, and, uh, but that path is of course not only um, a political development, Absolutely. Uh, much of it will have to do with the economy, uh, with being ready to be part of the single European market. And I would like to take my experience and uh, put it into value in Georgia. I would be delighted if after a few years of doing service here I could say there were some economic projects that I had a part in that created jobs, that advanced skills, that brought uh, income, prosperity uh, to Georgia. Yes, so that, that would be very nice indeed. Okay, Mr. Ambassador, you mentioned about the Georgia standing on the road to European integration. How far we are? Um, I think you are doing pretty good. Um, it, what we understand is that the will of the Georgian people across the board mm -hmm. is very strong. Um, you know, to join the European Union, there's three elements that mm -hmm. uh, candidate countries or countries that wish to join have to bring. The first is obvious. You have to share the values and the goals of the European Union. We're like a club. We want people to share our goals and values. The second, and that's a principal part of goals and values, you have to be a sustainable, pluralistic democracy. We're a club of democracies. There's no place for undemocratic states in our union. And the third is the economic aspect. The economy of the country that wishes to join has to be ready to withstand uh, pressures that come with the internal market. Once you're in the EU, it's one market. There's no customs, there's no kind of protection for your market, for your companies from the competition. So it has to be a mature um, economy. And uh, Georgia on all those areas is making good progress. There's more progress to be made. Uh, right now you have what we call the European perspective. Correct. At some point we'll follow the candidate status and once you have the candidate status, we begin official negotiations and those negotiations have to lead to a point where the European Union says Georgia has achieved the acquis. In other words, has transposed the full body of European regulation, uh, laws and standards, or is ready to transpose that in the short term. And that's a giant task because the full body of European legislation, regulation and standards, it comes from, has to do with the political, the way the state is organized, the judiciary and so on, but then every detail of public life, the quality of the water, the safety of the uh, pedestrian crossings, just to name arbitrary examples. It's a very broad and deep agenda. Before that, as you absolutely correctly mentioned, uh, we should fulfill uh, some homework, let me say so, about 12 uh, quite well-known recommendations yes. for the whole Georgian populations. For population, I'm sorry. Uh, how, uh, what's your personal expectation? Expectations in these regards, and uh, do you think that, is there anything what threatens Georgian democracy? I, my expectation is that uh, Georgia uh, can fulfill those 12 recommendations. 
um, it's in the hands of the Georgians Correct. and of the Georgian political system. Um, I like to say the ball is in your court, but different than in sports, we are here to help you play the ball, to return the ball. And uh, that's true of the Union, the European Union, the Commission, of all the member states. All our cooperation is geared towards um, uh, supporting you. Uh, there are some areas where I believe more progress uh, will have to be made. If you don't mind my saying so, one is the polarization. Mm -hmm. It's very important for Georgia to send a message. We have a consensus that we want this. We are all working in this direction and we're working together on it. If the message that comes to the European Union is that the Georgians just can't get along and can't agree on anything, um, I don't think that's as helpful, helpful as it as it needs to be. Um, uh, but uh, on the other hand, the government has a clear agenda, a clear legislative process. They say everything will be delivered in terms of laws by Christmas time, by the end of the year. So we're observing that. Uh, the process is important. Um, it should be an inclusive process involving all political um, forces in the country and of course uh, we'll have to look at uh, the results but as I said it's a it's really a teamwork where both the European Union its member states and Georgia are working together uh, on this goal yeah before moving to the main interest of mine I mean economics and business there is one thing which really bothers me and I think the whole Georgian community Mr. Ambassador, we might not face so-called depolarization in general, mm. but there is no polarization in regards of how we are moving towards EU. That's where everybody is united, I mean, mm. within the... But as you absolutely right mentioned, we might have the situation where polarization exists, yeah. but at the same time we have fulfilled all the obligations which are going to be definitely observed and monitored later mm. on. I mean, the quality, the purpose, aims, all the recommendations. Uh, do we have still a chance when the community is united for the aims that there is no polarization in this regard, that we are following EU, we, are, we want to be a part of this family, as you mentioned, the club? Yes. We see that the door is opening for us, but at the same time, internal political polarization still exists. It might be restriction for no. You will. Uh, you, you definitely have the chance and will have the chance. I mean, political polarization exists in other countries as Everybody, well. I think. And um, well, it depends uh, on it, the level. Yeah. It depends on the level yeah. and uh, a lively political debate is part of pluralistic democracies. Absolutely. Uh, it's the, the form of the debate and can um, a consensus be achieved? Um, what I notice sometimes here is that people don't argue about policy proposals, they argue about the legitimacy of the other person, of the other party. Um, and um, I think that's rather less helpful. So just, uh, I would say, bring down the temperature a little bit. Uh, bring, um, uh, be careful about personal attacks and be perful, careful about delegitimizing uh, other political forces. I'm not here to tell the Georgians how to run their politics, uh, how to have their debates. That's not my job. Uh, Georgia is for the Georgians. Uh, all I can say is the impressions uh, that some developments make on us Europeans. But the bottom line is, of course, you have the opportunity, the opportunities here. I would just like to add, it's also now. Yes, you know, uh, momentum. At the end of next year, the <coughs> European Council will reconvene to see how the uh, aspirant countries are doing. So we have around one year that really, really counts.
From Germany to the U.S., for more than 30 years, the United States has worked to create and maintain strong diplomatic and economic relations with Georgia. DFC's predecessors, the Overseas Private Investment Corp Corporation, OPIC, and the U.S. Agency of International Development, USAID's Development Credit Authority, DCA, were among the first development finance institutions to invest in newly independent states following the fall of the Soviet Union. DFC continues to advance development in the region through through investments in agriculture, financial services, and infrastructure projects such as the Port of Poti on Georgia's Black Sea coast. Last month, a DFC team, including Chief Development Officer Andrew Herskovitz and Kenneth Angel, Managing Director of Project Finance, traveled to Tbilisi, Georgia to highlight some DFC-supported projects and meet with regional leaders. During the trip, DFC signed two new loan agreements with Georgian businesses for logistics and infrastructure projects and explored ways that DFC's new technical assistance tool could further build on its impact in the region. to Lithuania. Last week, the International Conference on Competition and Consumer Rights, jointly organized by Georgian National Energy and Water Supply Regulatory Commission, Georgian National Competition Agency, National Bank of Georgia, Communication Commission, and Insurance State Supervision Service, was held in Tbilisi. Our analyst, Georgi Aronia, attended the conference and interviewed the head of Lithuanian State Consumer Rights Protection Authority, Goda Alexaide. Ms. Alexaide, thank you for your time. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much. It's a great honor to be here for me also. Let's begin um, talking about, straight away talking about Georgia. Uh, you know, for a small country such as Georgia, in general, to bring investors is very important. But in order to bring investors into the country, it's um, customary, we could say, to give them some sort of um, grounds, regulatory grounds to, to breathe freely. You know, based on your experience, what is the golden ratio, the golden balance between these two and uh, from the consumer's perspective? How could the government uh, ensure that the rights of consumers are protected, but at the same time, investors are interested? Oh, it's a, you know, it's a quite philosophical question, I would say. So it's always the balance of it. But in your case, in Georgian case, you should really focus now on consumers' protection, consumers' rights protection. And especially the strong consumers' rights protection policy is the basis for investors to invest, because they feel safe that the state really puts the right ruling the right uh, guarantees uh, for consumers. And uh, I would say that uh, information education is the most important thing in the first stage, just for the consumer to know, and for investor, of course, what are the rights guaranteed for consumers. What is the relation between protection of rights, per mm -hmm. se, and the uh, economic development of, of the country, the well-being of people? You know, is there a correlation between the two? Of course it is. It is the straightforward, direct correlation. Uh, the stronger, the higher protection of the rights is the better economic uh, development. Uh, what, what advice could you give to Georgia, which just begins this process? You know, as, as you may know, it's been roughly two weeks since we initiated the law, and uh, this is very new for us. So what could be the main challenges that our country mm. could face? Uh, public awareness, the main thing. It's about the people to know their rights. It's just first weeks you have. And of course, you have to strengthen the administra administrative capacities. This means human resources. For the moment, the division which is in the competition uh, with council is only ten peop in t eight people. Yeah, it's only eight people. So you need a bigger number. So for the next year, just plan a bigger number. 
and talk to people on social media, on TV. Uh, in our case, Lithuanian case, the consumers say that the best channels are TV, the local TV, and then social media. It of course depends on the um, group, social groups. You need to have this consumer portrait of Georgia, of Sakartvelo. Um, you know, Georgia and uh, Lietuva have very similar modern history, you know, and based on that, uh, how did you manage to establish a well-functioning system? You know, what were the challenges that Lietuva faced back in the day that you resolved? Oh, it's already 20 years, <laughs> more than 20 years. Um, the good law, good written law. Actually, uh, Lithuania is a very legalistic country, and the rule of law is the most important thing. So first prerequisite is law, and the second one, political will. So the politics uh, should support consumers, and it very depends on the political coalition, <laughs> on the political virtues. Is it a human being, a man, or a money? In terms of law, what are the main areas that need to be reformed as soon as possible? You know, what is the first stage? of reforms that then brings additional development? Uh, so ensure, enforce guarantees. So as the first step, information about the rights, the right list of the rights. This is the main thing. And of course the enforcement, as I said, about the, the uh, agency. So people who would consult uh, their, their good capabilities of knowing the law, of solving the disputes. That is the main, the first thing. How big, if, uh, how big of an issue is enforcement in general? And based on your uh, practice, um, what are the best practices? You know, what, what are the advices you could give to the national agency? Uh, so the main advice is to make the decisions of an agency obligatory. In our case, in Lithuanian case, every decision on uh, disputes is obligatory. This means that uh, then um, all the businesses follow the rules. They're a bit, let's say, so afraid <laughs> of having been uh, penalized, uh, having been given fines. Based on your, co based on your communication with the Georgian National Agency of Competition, um, do you see that they have political will to, which you mentioned just before, to initiate this reform, to go through with it? And uh, in general, how would you rate their work as a person with an outside perspective? I can see that really uh, the agency is very motivated. It is supported a lot. Uh, these first steps, uh, of course, there. It could be more, <laughs> and we already been waiting for two years for this law of, on consumers' protection to be adopted. So I would wish that it could have a really stronger support. But anyway, what they are doing. So, eight out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how important is uh, this law and in general uh, ensuring the rights of uh, consumers for the Georgia's European integration? So it's number one. Yeah, you have it now. And the next step, enforcement. And uh, my last question would be, what you see on the conference here, uh, what is the outtakes and what are the advices you can leave to the people in charge, what should be done as soon as possible? Oh, I'm um, like, you know, repeating machine. Uh, once again, public awareness, raising public awareness. And what I can see now, you already over jumped Lithuania. I mean, our consumers' rights protection agency is not so independent as your agency. It is already independent. And so go for that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Now let us switch to the business and see how the private sector has performed this week. Traditionally, our reporter Natia Taktakishvili followed this week's Business Wire. Genetic producing Georgian company Luka Polare in a partnership with TBC Bank is implementing a new enterprise project in Tbilisi. The investment of value totals to 1 million USD. As Annie 
Tsitskishvili, the head of peer and marketing department of Luka Polari, declares that the constant expansion of the ice cream chain put the need to expand the enterprise as well, although, according to her, it will not be a standard production building. We need a large space that would respond to our ambitions and partners soon appeared. Luca Polari is implementing this project together with TBC Bank. We will build a building on an area of 2,600 square meter near East Point side. It will not be only production. There will be a warehouse training center for employees, various spaces, showrooms, where we will organize various events. We don't want the project to be just for production expansion. It should be a building of the future, which will be as eco-friendly as possible. For this, we are thinking and working on the use of different alternative sources of energy. We think we will move to a new building in two years, said Anitsitskishvili. A few months ago, the first eco-friendly roller skater brand Miskusi appeared on the Georgian market, which was one of the beneficiaries of the state program Enterprise Georgia. Namely, in 2020, the founders of the company won a grant of 30,000 jewelry after bringing the necessary equipment and raw materials from abroad. Company Miskusi started production of skate rollers. The enterprise is located in Tbilisi, Voronsovi Street. The company officially started receiving orders from April 30 this year. On its very day, Miskusi opened its own store and showroom on the territory of Sport Complex Arena on University Street in Tbilisi, where their products are presented. Currently, the price of the roller skates amounts to 450 jalari. France and America showed interest in our products, although the current production is only for the Georgian market. We have eight people involved in the activity. Therefore, we plan to equip the enterprise with the necessary equipment, increase the number of products and prepare for the export market, says Mariam Kemuklidze. As for the price policy of Miskusi, the materials needed for the production was purchased in large quantities, so the existing collection was not affected by a sharp price increase. However, when the stock of material runs out, the price of the rollers will increase. As the co-founder of the company declares, they will adjust it according to the expenditures. Tav Georgia, the managing company of Tbilisi and Batumi International Airports, invested more than 3 million jalari in the new equipment. The investment was spent to buy new equipment for the ramp ground handling, in particular a passenger bars, new aircraft passenger stairs, an aircraft de-icing machine and a high loader designed for cargo aircraft loading and unloading operations, ensuring service for cargo weighing up to 14 tones. Likachi Termo is another business that offers new products to customers with the support of TBC Bank. The company, which started production of thermal insulation materials in 2017 in Ajara region, decided to add a new line, disposable paper cups. With the support of TBC Bank, the enterprise has produced the first batch of disposable paper cups of different sizes for months ago. Likachi Thermo is also going to produce disposable thermal dishes, which will supply the companies working on the takeaway services. In 2017, with the support of TBC Bank, Iraq Litrobadze bought a building of 1,500 square meter in Helvacharuri. Before that, he studied the market and realized that the production of thermal insulation material would be a profitable business, as the product was in great demand in Georgia at that time, while the product was mainly imported from Iran and Turkey. We decided to start production of thermal insulation materials due to the great demand on the Georgian market, which was mainly imported from abroad. On the advice of friends, I bought an existing enterprise in Helachauri. We doubled the space, updated the equipment and added personnel who we are trained to work with the equipment on the site. We started with four people and today we employ 20 persons, says the founder of Likachi Thermo. 
publishing houses declare that book prices are up due to the current situation on the international markets. Director of Bakur Sulakauri Publishing House, Tina Mamulashvili, told BMG that the price increase is caused by the growing prices on the raw materials as well as the pandemic and logistic problems caused by the Russia-Ukraine war. According to her, if one ton of paper used to cost 800 USD now it costs to 1,200 USD. Publishers are trying to maintain book prices. However, many problems have accumulated worldwide in terms of production. In Georgia, books are either fully imported or necessary raw materials are coming from abroad. During the COVID period, many difficulties arose. The problem was the price of paper and transportation. The cost of raw materials has doubled. If early one ton of paper costs 800 USD, now it price totals to 1,200 USD. We try to increase the prices as carefully as possible. Therefore, the price of some books has increased by one jewelry, while some by two jewelry, says the director of Bakur Sulakauri Publishing House. Book price increase is also confirmed by Biblos Group. The managing partner of the company, Ragli Gagnitze, explained to BMG that the price adjustment started from 2021 due to the sharp increase on paper price. Books became more expensive in bookmark books in Bakke. Mariam Kikacheishvili, the founder of the book, told BMG that many publication houses used to print books in China, but now the process has moved to Europe and this has caused a, difficult, caused a difference in price. In our stores, the price has changed from 5 to 20 percent. A lot of books were printed in China. It was relatively cheaper. Now the process has moved to Europe, which has led to a price difference. International publications are also worried about this, says Mariam Kikacheishvili. A new confectionery brand, Cabarini, will start operating on the market. Cabarini will offer its customers sweets made from nuts, marshmallows and various fruits. The company's enterprise is located in Kvemo Ponichala and it was launched with the support of TBC program startup. Jakob Komachice, the representative of Cabarini, said that he plans to expand the enterprise in the future. According to him, the products will initially be sold in the supermarket chain Schapari. I am a lover of sweets and I wanted to offer the market a product that would have the best state quantities. Initially, we conducted a study to see how much demand was for marshmallow in Georgia. It turned out that it's quite in demand on the Georgian market. Before we got the recipe, we worked for a month and a half. In addition to marshmallow, we contacted farmers in Guri, signed contracts with several farmers and we buy apples plums and quinces from them, says the representative of Cabarini. Zuktidi Mall was opened in partnership with Bank of Georgia in the center of Zuktidi. The total cost of the project was 8.5 million USD. The bank's investment amounted to 6.1 million USD, which was fully used for construction and repair works. We're glad that with the financial assistance of Bank of Georgia, we opened Zugdidi Mall in the center of Zugdidi. The shopping mall is located on the area of 50,000 square meter. A one-story building includes international and local brands. The mall has both food and fast food spaces, as well as clothing, perfumery, books, appliances, and various stores. The following brands are located in the center Carrefour, Waikiki, Floss, Super, Biblos, Adidas, Zoomer, Miniso, Alta, and others. Zugdidi Mall is the first shopping center in the Samegrelo Zemoswaneti region that meets international standards, said Teo Gegiadze, commercial director of Blocks. Last week, we had the pleasure of hosting Pedro Vieira, Director of Operations at 500 Global, one of the world's leading startup accelerators behind Canva, Reddit, Udemy, and many more. Our analyst, Georgi Aronia, talked to Pedro about 500 Global's Georgian chapter and the challenges and blessings of the Georgian startup ecosystem. Pedro, hi. It's a pleasure to have you here at BMG. Pleasure being here. Pedro, it's been uh, more than two years since 500 Global entered the Georgian market. What could you say about these two years? 
Well, there were two uh, years of learning for us and our local uh, partners and for the founders, but overall very positive experience. We've already trained 30 companies. We've worked with local investors and uh, we're really excited about the future. Um, you know, based on your two years experience, what could you say about the Georgian startup ecosystem? What are its defining characteristics? So one is its uh, regional, actually, re regional location and the fact that it is a very friendly hub for all the countries in the surrounding region. And so that allows Georgia to place itself as, as a hub that can attract tech talent, aside from obviously retaining its own tech talent. So t um, founders are very talented technologically here. Science and technology is strong in the country. And that's also uh, that's always an, a, a good base for for a, a tech ecosystem to start with, uh, and uh, we we believe that with some capacity building in some of the other areas, including commercial side, uh, it's possible to build uh, amazing companies here. Could you compare Georgia statistics wise to other countries that fall within your region? Are there any different trends that you could highlight? I mean, what, what we like, it's always hard to compare um, in, in tech, tech ecosystems because they're all different in, in, in different ways. What we, what we see here is that the capacity to start companies um, in an efficient way, because the talent is still quite affordable, uh, is very high. And so we, we see the companies here Building, building services and products and can be very competitive uh, globally. And, um, and when we expect that with our contribution of knowledge and capital, we can uh, accelerate that. As I know, the approach that 500 Global has while launching a particular country is very localized. You know, you look uh, and on, at the country in very detail. What were the necessities that you had to reinstate in Georgia to run this program? Yeah. As I was saying, the, the, what we see here is strong uh, tech talent, uh, uh, quite affordable. And what we, we think we can do is complement that, um, that talent with other uh, areas of knowledge that the founders need. They need to learn more about sales. They need to know more about scaling their companies to global markets. They need to know more about fundraising from international investors. And so that's the type of uh, expertise that we bring with our accelerator. Uh, and then uh, complementary to that, we also work with all the other stakeholders in the ecosystem. So this is not just about training the founders. We know an ecosystem needs all the stakeholders to play their role. So 500 is known for that. We're also working with local investors that are already acting and attracting more of them, working with the public policy makers to make sure that the regulation is in place. So we'll, we'll continue playing our role in, in, in working with the others. What you just mentioned is the topic I wanted to cover as well. Um, 500 Global cooperates very closely with uh, Georgian Innovations and Technology Agency, for instance, with and any other uh, agencies as well. What could you say about the cooperation? between the two? How, how efficient are they? How willing are they to cooperate with you? Very, very good. So our partnership started more than two years ago with, G with the government through GITA and on the private side with the Bank of Georgia. And it has been a, a three-way collaboration that's worked very well. Because as I was saying, we always need the public and the private sector to, to collaborate and play their roles. And in this case, it's worked very nicely. On one hand, we see a uh, strong will from the public side to, to, to implement or to support the right initiatives and to even potentially review policies or regulations that need to be revised for the growth of these startups in the country. And then on the private side, like the, the true investment from the Bank of Georgia in the first companies that we trained and now they're continued support for the next four years ahead. So it's been, it's been terrific to work with, with these entities and we'll continue working with them and others who want to collaborate with us. The cooperation you have with Bank of Georgia here in Georgia, is it something unique or you cooperate with business entities, private business entities in other countries as well? We collaborate with everyone who wants to collaborate with us around the world. Uh, the, the partnership with the bank has been, uh, each partnership is somewhat unique, right? And so the, the partnership with here, with the Bank of Georgia has been very, very interesting because of the role that they seem to want to play in the overall economy, in the overall ecosystem 
uh, sponsoring or supporting a lot of the Georgian-based initiatives, and this is, this is one of them. And we're very happy that they've been a strong partner, not, not just on the capital side, but also on all other uh, complementary initiatives that we've been trying to promote. And um, in that sense, it is unique, and we're happy with how it went. How different is the acceleration program that you have in Georgia from, uh, let's say, European acceleration programs? Are there requirements different, for instance? This, this program is no different than the others in terms of requirements, and it's equivalent to our other programs. So no difference there. You know, uh, running a startup in Georgia is uh, obviously tough. There are reasons for that, and uh, this topic is very well known of. But what I want to ask you about is that what are the benefits if any, of running a startup, a tech startup from Georgia? Mm -hmm. Well, I, first I go back to, to my previous point on tech talent. So tech, tech talent exists, is affordable. That's a very important layer for everything else. Then the second part is the, the fact that this is a small market can be seen as a disadvantage by many, but for us is actually an advantage. On one hand, you get to test your product more easily because it's, it's easy to get to the Bank of Georgia or to other large corporations where you test the product and gets you ready to then scale to other countries after you have proven it. That makes it easier. And um, on the other hand, because the, country, because the market, the local market or the domestic market is small, founders also have a global mindset from day one. They know that if they want to build something big, grandiose, competitive, they have to build for the global markets. And to me, that's super important when you're starting companies. But that's all tough. You know, that's very tough to build a global startup out of a, such a small country. You know, what, what advice could you give? What are the main structural things that you would highlight for, yeah, for founders? Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. It's tough. Uh, it has these advantages that you can test first before you scale globally. And then when you do scale globally, our advice is usually that first. Obviously, build something that's unique uh, if you're going for the global markets, or if it's not unique, that it is very competitive. And for example, the competitiveness competitiveness can be seen as a regional compet competitiveness. There's a lot of products and services that were tested elsewhere, and their playbook can be implemented by the, co the companies here with a huge advantage because they know the economy, they know the culture, and so they can do that, uh, they can turn that into their competitive advantage. If they are going to the global markets and other foreign markets, we always say, make sure that you, you pick the right market. So a lot of people think it has to be the US market. Sometimes it's the Asian, mar the Asian market. In some cases, it may be the European market. So um, pick the right market. Uh, third thing would be do it at the right time. If you go too early to one of these foreign markets, you may fail because you don't have the infrastructure ready. If you go too late, you may lose the momentum. So time it right. And then finally, do it with the right team. Uh, it's, it's very hard to hire talent in foreign countries, in foreign cultures. And so what we see uh, working well is for the founders to take that step first, understand how these new clients in these new markets think and buy, and then after that find the local, the right local partners to continue the growth there. But doing it with the right team would be my, my last recommendation. What is your take on uh, how American and European investors see Georgia as a country? Um, is it attractive enough for them to make investment in tech startups? Because uh, are they willing to take that risk, for instance? I, I mean, I, I can't speak for all the investors, but we are a very good example of a leading investment firm who's been in Georgia for a couple of years now and will continue here for another four or more, we hope, right? And so we, we believe that there is more and there's growing attention. Uh, from international investors to what's happening in Georgia in the, in the broader region. And uh, the, the, the things that we see being built here are, are very interesting investment opportunities, and I think that will continue happening. Uh, and then there's this, this, idea, this uh, uh, opportunity that I think also investors see, again, not just about Georgia, but Georgia as a bridge and as a, as a gate to a much bigger region. Uh, and. Uh, we hope we can help with that too. What could be the competitive advantage of Georgian tech startups? What could they do in a different way 
so that they compete with uh, European or even Asian or American startups. Yeah, I, I think picking up on the latter is one of the bi there's there's other advantages, but one things that one of the things that can be highly explored. Uh, by, by Georgian companies, and we're seeing that with companies like Paisy, for example, is they understand the other markets, but they understand that there's a big gap in their own market and in this bigger region, broader region. And so uh, tackling these bigger opportunities in a region that the global players are not is a huge opportunity that we expect companies like Paisy, Cargon, others that we've trained in the previous programs and more will continue doing. You mentioned uh, several companies. Could you highlight a little bit more of them, the companies that you worked with before? You know what you like about them. Yeah. Well, I, you know, when we have kids, you don't have to. You can't have a favorite. And I picked those two examples just because they're they're good examples of how companies are building, are taking advantage of what they know from other markets, implementing and building things that are bigger in this market. Um, of all the companies we've trained here, what we like to see is, again, their drive to build something that's bigger than the domestic market. It's something that international investors will pay attention to, and it's something that it's services and products that are having a meaningful impact. These companies that we've trained in the first, the, we trained about 30 companies, and so these, what we see is many of them, their sales have grown 10x and more. They've, in, they've, uh, 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 excuse me, they've raised more than 10 times the, the amount that we've invested. Their sales have doubled, tripled, in many cases, more, much more than that. And with that, they create jobs and they improve the economy. And so. What we want to see is that, is these companies continuing that growth uh, themselves and then having a positive impact in the local economy. What makes 500 Global different, or what makes 500 Global stand out from uh, other startup yeah. accelerators? Um, well, I mean, we, I, I don't like to comment on others, but I can tell you what we believe is, is truly unique about us, is that many people use the sentence that talent is everywhere and opportunity is not. 500 from its inception has had this, this, this sentence in, in, in mind and in, in our DNA and we've built a series of a family of funds and accelerators around the world that is indeed bringing knowledge and capital to where this uh, talent is. And so we're creating this opportunity not, not just alone but in partnerships with local, uh, other local players and uh, that is truly unique. I think if you look at the results that we've achieved in over 10 years, uh, they're pretty, they speak for themselves. We have more than 50 unicorns in the portfolio, many other companies between 100 and 1 billion valuation. So we think it works. We think it is a good way to complement what exists in these ecosystems. We don't come in to replace whoever's there. We come in to collaborate, to augment what's there. And um, the strategy seems to be working. So I would say it's very unique, too, in that sense. What are your future plans here in Georgia? Well, one thing we know for sure, we, we are, again, in a partnership of four years with the government, with the Bank of Georgia. And in that, we will train and invest in 120 companies at least. Uh, but this is this is just what we know in the short term. We when we when we enter a region, we we do it with a much longer vision, much longer horizon in mind, and so we expect that this is really just the beginning of a much longer uh, presence for 500 in Georgia and in the broader region. My last question: uh, Do you see Georgia as a way of uh, some sort of regional hub? for um, tech startups, for tech companies, because we had a lot of uh, huge influx of people, mm -hmm. especially tech talents coming to Georgia in mm -hmm. recent months. So given this and given the you know, regulatory framework, do you envision Georgia as a potential place in the Caucasus where tech companies are being born? Yeah, I do, I do. Again, because of the nature of its people, and the, the, the level of relationships and friendliness of relationships that it is able to attain with all the surrounding countries because it's a, it's a relatively small domestic market so people will build here but have the ability to then immediately start thinking about expansion because the talent is here and is affordable. And so, uh, yes, uh, we do believe that there's a huge potential for this to be uh, a successful tech hub, a successful entrepreneurial hub. And uh, again, we will be here to help with what we can. Well, thank you very much and let's hope that uh
your vision is true. Thank you very much, Pedro. Thank you so much for having me. And that's all for today. We will meet next Sunday at 11 a.m. sharp with more news and analysis on business and economics. Before that, you can find all information you need both in Georgian and in English on BN.G and Forbes.G. Take care and see you soon. Checkpoint is presented by GM Pharma, the first international multinational pharmaceutical company in Georgia. GM Pharma, to serve those who need it most.